Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Diane Hayden with Marianne Hostarella today for How to Thrive in These Changing Times, What Your Soul is Calling You to Do. And each week we talk about all different uh, ancient wisdoms, the metaphysics from numerology to astrology to the destiny cards. And today we're going to be talking about astrology. So Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Hi, Marianne. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm good. Um, actually, I'm a little um, confused. I, I, we weren't talking about personality today. We we're talking about astrology, huh? Okay. We, we can do either. I forgot. I, <laughs> I know it at the end of last week's call, we talked about that, and you may be right. I don't know why I had it in my head, because I know we did go over astrology a little bit, I think, the first call that we did. Right. So either way, whatever, you know what? I'm going to let you go with that because okay. you're the expert. So if you are feel, if you're feeling drawn to personality, let's do it. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I was, for some reason or other, I, that's where my intuition was leading me that we were talking about today. And so we can kind of, we can mix it up and, you know, I may not have, you know, we may not have an hour's worth of material on personality because it's a pretty complex topic and so something that I may have to um, break down a little bit more for people if I were to do an individual personality composite for them uh, as opposed to trying to explain it all, all gen generally here. But well, I'm going to give it my best shot and then we can move into if people have questions about any of the sciences or any of the wisdoms or anything, we can open it up. So I'll start with um, the personality piece and then we'll go from there. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, okay. sounds good. And actually, um, so this is a good place to start because astrology really um, is a huge piece of personology. Um, so whether or not people have heard of personology, it may not sound as popular as astrology, numerology, or, or even the destiny card system right now, but um, personology is a system that has been, I believe, really spiritually downloaded from the other side into the bodies of two men, the psyches of two men by the name of um, Eust Elfers, J-O-O-S-T Elfers, and uh, Jeff Goldschneider. Um, and these two men, uh, brilliant as they are, Jeff Goldschneider actually was studying psychiatry. He had received his medical degree from one of the Ivy Leagues, and he was studying psychiatry, um, preparing obviously to become a psychiatrist in uh, the medical model of things, and then decided approximately halfway through his training in um, medical school that um, his affinity for the metaphysics was far stronger than his love for uh, medical science. So he dropped out of um, psychiatry training and wrote with Eust Elfers these three books. It's a trilogy of sorts um, and known as the secret language of birthdays. Um, the first part of the trilogy is the book of birthdays. Huge book, you know, very, I mean, just hugely comprehensive. Uh, and it's very simply a book that is devoted to each day of the chronological year, and it gives a title to the day. So, um, you know, I'll, actually, I'll start with you, Diane, just because um, I think it's probably, um, do I have, actually, I don't have the book of birthdays with me, so we won't do that, but that's okay. I can speak to it. My day is January 7th, and um, it is the day of unique interests. So I don't think there's too many people that know me that wouldn't say, oh, that's pretty applicable for you, uh, the day of unique interests. Um, and so it assigns a title or a theme to the essence of that particular person's soul's energy, and then um, it names the day. Um, so, um, you know, there are just a million other um, 
uses of a title and I'm just trying to think. Of yeah, some I, I actually think I remember mine because I, I feel like I've read that book or you might have introduced me to it. I feel okay. like mine is from the theater to the pioneer. Oh, okay. Interesting. It yeah. may well be that. Yeah. From the, the day of fear? No. The day of from, from the fear? No, from the theater. Theater. Like, oh, theater. like stage, from the stage to the pioneer. Oh, interesting. Okay, now, the way you're describing that, uh, it sounds like that may be the third part of the trilogy. That may not be the day, February oh, 8th, because usually he says it's the day of, I Whatever. don't know, yeah. individuation or the day okay. of the pioneer or something like that. So the first book is fairly simple, although the, um, the portrait of the day is very comprehensive in its writing. I mean, this is really a sophisticated form of esoteric science. Uh, it's uh, beautifully written and articulated. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, these men are, are geniuses that were meant to be, as I put it, downloaded here to teach <coughs> this part of astrology. So what they've done is they have taken what we know as standard astrology and the 12 signs, starting from with Aries and moving all the way to Pisces being the 12th sign. And they have separated each sign into four compartments or four categories. So they have said, um, you are either a Pisces Aries, meaning you're born on the cusp of Pisces and Aries, or you're an Aries one, or you're an Aries two, or you're an Aries three. So each one of those titles is assigned to one week's worth of that zodiacal sign. So um, my grandson, for instance, this past week was born in the week of the pioneer. Uh, so that ranged from April 11th through April 18th. Um, but then, um, you know, there are obviously weeks prior to that and, um, and themes prior to that that are assigned to the week of, oh, I think, let's see, March 23rd to the 30th is the week of the child or the week of the star. So what he's done is he's taken every single sign, divided it into four compartments, coming up with 48 distinctive personalities. Uh, and he has assigned three character strengths to each week and three character deficits, if you will, or areas that one needs to work, soul work um, for that week. So, um, you know, the, you're assigned with, based on your different personality traits, that week, really specifically categorizes you more as an Aries one and Aries two, rather than just generally looking at the sign of Aries. Um, and the essence of the individual is represented by the name of that period. So the week of the child. My oldest daughter, she's born in that week, March 23rd to 30th. And she is in very many ways as mature and intelligent and all of those things as she is, she's also very childlike and has a lot of positivity and a lot of um, smiling energy to her. And she's more, she kind of gives you more of a heart feeling than she would, uh, even though she's double clubs in the suit of the car and the, in the, um, in the, you know, in the cardiology system. So she's childlike. Um, and so, or they could be the week of authority. Um, so whatever the energy is of that particular soul that comes in to do the work, it's assigned a name or a title that very well defines it. Um, and it's chosen by the soul. Um, so because it's supposed to help complete that soul's work in this lifetime. So the soul chose the week of the child or the soul chose the week of authority to help it on its curriculum, just like the soul chose the cards or the soul chose the numbers, whatever. This is all part of code for the soul. Um, so there are innate talents 
that a soul has, has brought over from the other side. So theoretically, if one believes in reincarnation, and certainly metaphysics does, um, the belief is that you learned certain character strengths, certain skill sets when you were living here before. So when you come in to this lifetime with those skill sets, your starting point is, let's say, let's say I'm getting, again, I'll go back to you, you're February 8th, but your personality might say that you came in as a Virgo one, which means that in your last lifetime, you developed strengths you know, and perhaps didn't finish your work on the weaknesses that were assigned to the Virgo one aspect of your personality profile. Okay. So you're coming in with that. That's so interesting to me because I do feel like sometimes my, uh, you know, my sign of Aquarius doesn't always fit some of my personality. I feel like it doesn't always fit some of my personality. I see some characteristics in these other signs and that could obviously be like, because my moon is in Gemini or whatever, but what you're saying drills it down a little bit more, I think. Yes. And, yes. and also, I've, I've also always felt like, you know, to say someone's an Aquarian, it's a huge range of birthdays. That's so right. how can you get more specific and detailed into, like my mom's an Aquarian and her and I are completely different people. That's right. And That's she, right. she is in a different week than I am. Yes. So, yeah. So there you go with, with just the subtle differences, even though same Zodiac sign. Perfect validation of what I've been attempting to <laughs> articulate. Yes, absolutely. You know, um, so that those seven days have their own assignment as opposed to, you know, if you're a cancer one or a cancer three, it's you're different. Obviously, we're all different people anyway, but this really um, enhances those differences. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, you come in with these innate talents. Um, like I'll use my youngest daughter, for instance, just quickly. Uh, she is a nurse in this lifetime. There is no doubt in my mind that in a past lifetime, she was some sort of huge healer. Um, you know, she just came in with the science. She came in with the understanding of the body. She came in with all this. And sure enough, her starting point is Virgo. I think it's Virgo one or Virgo two. And Virgos have to do with health and healing. So my belief is that she had all this innate um, talent and ability and compassion for the human body and for suffering. And that came from before, because when she came in, she just knew how to do it. Um, so anyway, this, you come in with these starting points or this backpack on your shoulder, so to speak of, this is what I already know how to do. Um, and it's not anything that they learn in the living room of their parents' homes. It's not anything that so learns uh, in the academic curriculum of high school or whatever. These are things that come in with the backpack over your shoulder from a past life, my belief is. And then uh, personality says, okay, here's your starting point. This is what you've got to go with. Now in this lifetime, you're going to be on this GPS system where you're going to continue to learn um, about a curriculum that's different from the one you lived before. And then we want your ending point to be, so what are you working toward? Well, you may have come in as a Virgo and you're working toward being a Sagittarius three. Now we have to look at what the Sagittarius three energies comprise. Why does your soul want to leave Virgo behind and move into Sagittarian energy? What is it going to learn from that particular composite of what a Sagittarian three is about? And, you know, I have to say, um, I did, when I was working at Middlesex Hospital, I was fortunate enough to be working with the director of psychiatry there who, you know, was very taken by my other interests. And um, he said to me, you know, he said, I find this all so fascinating 
he said, uh, what I'd like to do, actually, he said, is I would like to do my uh, medical model evaluations with patients, and then I would like to send you the written format of what I've determined, and then I'd like you to take that format and maybe use it with this whole personality thing. And, and I did that with a, a lot, and it was fascinating what was in the material from this from these personality profiles of the patients that we worked with. I mean, I never, he wanted me to present to grand rounds and all that, and I just wasn't feeling, this was back in 2012, I was not feeling comfortable enough to sit in front of a lot of white coats and try to explain an esoteric system to them and try to tell them that the work that they were possibly doing <laughs> wasn't nearly as depthful as you know but oh that would have been awesome you should have done it <laughs> i should have done it well if i was an aquarian i probably would yeah i would have done it for like i don't care what you you know what i i've read so many um books about people there's more people than you think that follow this like yes. very high level people and you would be surprised. They just don't talk about it. They don't talk you know, about they it. They don't want anybody to know. You know, there's know. government leaders and celebrities and, you know, high profile people, entrepreneur, big entrepreneurs that some of them have intuitives that they That's right. you know, regularly go to. And a lot of them follow these principles. They just I, don't talk about it. No, I agree. And that's, I mean, that's the... I don't know. That's my hope for this pandemic is that we're going to be able to come out of the shadows, all of this holistic energy. I mean, things that people don't really, you know, it's not the conventional, so therefore we don't talk about it. It, it carries stigma with it. It's, you know, I don't know. I could get into all of that, but I'm not going to go, <laughs> go there. Like addiction or, or whatever. It's like, oh, you know, that, that has to do with the brain. That's stigmatized. So, you know, I think that, yes, the, the purpose of personality is to tr almost to assign a lesson plan to the soul and to set or a treatment plan. I mean, if I go into my medical model, what's the treatment plan for this patient? So what's the treatment plan for this soul? The soul came in with Virgo energies. Now the soul wants to move on this trajectory from point A when they were born, like my grandson in the other room, um, you know, three days old, and where does his soul want him to get to before he transitions? Uh, what is the energy? I mean, in, in my situation, I came in as a Libra, and I'm, <laughs> I'm ending as an Aries, which is very pretty typical. I mean, you know, I was surrounded with a lot of people, a lot of energy, a lot of children, a lot of family, and now I'm, you know, being the maverick that personality basically assigned to my soul, which is you need to, I was born during the week of individuation, which basically means, you know, you got to individuate and get away from the masses and do your own thing here. So it's a very, uh, it's a very interesting system, very comprehensive, and I think really um, speaks so accurately to, um, to the treatment plan for each soul. So what are the, what are the names of the three books again? The Book of Birthdays okay. is the first one. Uh, the second one is the Book of Relationships. And in that book, um, the gentleman, what they do is they take every single week that we described out of the 365, uh, out of, you know, the entire year, and they compare it to every other week of, of, in the year so, and come up with a composite for what the relationship would be like. So if you were in a relationship with somebody born in the week of, you know, uh, let's say my week, January 3rd to January 9th, which is the week of determination, what would our relationship be best at? And then they tell you three characteristics that it functions best at and three characteristics that it functions poorly at. So it might function best at love and it might function poorly at marriage. It might function best at friendship, poorly at sibling relationship, best at work, poorly at love, whatever the case may be. And then it also assigns a title to the relationship. So it could be uh, two peas in a pod. 
It could be uh, uncompromising sovereignty. Um, you know, there are just so many ways that they describe every week with every other week in the year and essentially determine what the strengths are in this relationship and what the weaknesses are and then gives about three paragraphs describing um, the relationship itself and how these two souls come together. Um, and then finally, the last book is The Week of Karmic Destiny. And that one I think probably is in many ways the most powerful because that's the one that specifically hones in on you as an individual and says, here's how you came in. Here's the strengths that you had as a young soul when you move, moved, transitioned from the other side to here. And this is where your soul wants you, who your soul wants you to grow into. These are the areas you need to release. These are the areas you need to teach, you know, the, the strengths that you have to give to the world, the lessons, the, the um, like in my daughter's case, all her knowledge of medicine and of the body, what she knew from before and how she's able to translate that into a career here. Um, but then there's more to be done. Okay, you have all these strengths, but now your soul wants you to continue to transform and grow. So how willing and how adaptable are you to release what you need to let go of from before and move into another, um, another area of energy for your growth? And the two authors' names again? Eust Elfers, so J-O-O-S as in Sam, T. And then E L F as in Frank E R S and Jeff. Um, oh, now I'm going to blank. <laughs> uh, go, oh my, Goldschneider. I'm sorry. G O L D S C H N E I D E R. Okay. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, um, essentially, you know, if you were to work with me uh, and we did essentially look at your, your destiny cards um, and your astrology um, and your numerology, then this would be the final piece of the uh, profile or the packet, so to speak, because then I would be able to integrate certainly some of the issues that you can identify as being core issues in your life that have been with you um, and that you'd like to work on, that you're aware of, um, that your ego keeps interfering with your soul work because it's, you know, it doesn't want to release uh, some of the things that you need, you need releasing. Um, so then, uh, you know, that would be an area that I could integrate uh, some of my uh, therapeutic skills and also, um, you know, have you take a look at you know, this, this treatment trajectory of your soul. So it's like your soul is in treatment from the time you come in until the time you leave. And what is it that it wants to learn? We know what your ego wants to learn. I mean, we get that, you know, we've all kind of on some level, oh, I went to this school or I did this, or this is who I am, or this is what I identify with. But that's not necessarily what your soul wants to learn. Um, so that's what we learn to sustain us financially and all of that sort of thing. But, um, you know, back to that whole, uh, thematic piece of, um, uh, David Brooks's The Road to Character, you know, resume profile versus eulogy profile. So what does your soul want you to leave this world with? Um, and, you know, I think this is a great time for us all to be looking at that because we certainly have the time to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> I just want to say, so this is interesting. I remember I've read a little bit from each of these different books and I remember the relationship book specifically as you were just talking about it, because, um, I looked at, uh, the, um, the, the, like, the nature of the relationship between myself and my ex-husband mm -hmm. who, who I started the magazine with. And it was so interesting because I remember the characteristics were that we were good as friends and business, 
and bad as marriage. <laughs> Unfortunately, I saw that after we got married. <laughs> right. But I always, I sort of always had this sense or feeling, I guess, about the two of us that we weren't necessarily supposed to be married, but we were supposed to be business partners. We were supposed to, you know, create something together, which right. maybe never would have happened if we didn't get married. That, or, 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 or somehow we got conf the path confused or, you know, whatever. But I remember seeing that. That was, that was just so interesting to me. I'm like, that is exactly right. We, right. Ab we absolutely felt more like friends and operated better as business partners than right. in a marriage. Well, and maybe the marriage was the business, you know, on some level, you know, true. yeah, that's I true. mean, that, that, that really was what, you know, was meant to marry between the two of you, but there may have been something left unfinished from a past lifetime between the two of you romantically. And, you know, as you say, I mean, maybe you had to get together on that level first to then, um, you know, to then consummate this business in a way that it might not have happened had you not, you know, I sometimes think too that, you know, hormonally or however one wants to put it in terms of all of the pheromones that are going on out there when two people connect, um, the chemistry that we call it, um, you know, that that's the soul or heavens or the universe's way of getting two people together to do the work who normally would never get together if they didn't have that physical attraction, you know? So, you know, maybe there's other work to be done, but it's almost the dessert that the universe lures you in with. And then, you know, and then you're supposed to do the rest, rest of the work after that. So, you know, it's hard to know. Yeah, that is, that is interesting because it is curious to me how, you know, like how and why you're attracted to certain people and not just right. necessarily from a romantic perspective, but also like, the friends that you're attracted to, the people that you attract into your life to collaborate on things, whether it's business or, you know, projects or that kind of thing, you know, yeah. in a, in a work relationship, like who, why do you fit, gravitate towards certain people versus others? Right. So. Well, I think just the word gravitate that you use is interesting. I mean, the gravitational pull is the soul pulling you in to that relationship for reasons and assignments that we're not always aware of in the beginning. Our mind thinks that, you know, we should be aware of it all. We should know it all, but we don't. And the soul is really the one driving the attraction uh, and saying, okay, get into this, get into this friendship, get into this partnership right now and take what you need and leave the rest and move, you know, and possibly move on, whatever the case may be. But yes, I mean, you're right, we don't always know, but there is a pull, there is an attraction. And again, that can also go back to the cards and why we're attracted to some people, but yet we're not compatible with them and all of that. So it's, um, it's complex, it's very complex. Yeah. Um, I, so, go, ahead. go ahead. I was just gonna say, so with these three books, you know, if someone was gonna do any you know, self-study, you'd start mm -hmm. with the book of birthdays and yes. then, okay. Yes, you would start with the book of birthdays. It's just really one full but very comprehensive page devoted to the day of your birth. And then, um, and then the second page, you know, speaks a little bit to the numerology of your birth. And, but, you know, just short, brief little paragraphs. And then like diet and exercise, what somebody born on this day should do for diet or for health issues. So it has little blurbs like that. And then it also says the three greatest strengths of this birth date are and then the three um areas of work or you know deficit are and um and so those are essentially those that's the book of birthdays it has those two pages devoted to every single day of the year um and then uh i thought we could possibly i don't know how many people are on the call but I certainly could identify because I have a list of the 48 periods, um, you know, so you would at least know the name of the week that you're in and perhaps, um, um, you know, basically just uh, from an identifying standpoint, like you'd know if you were born during the week of freedom or the week of new language or whatever. So, I mean, if yeah. People wanted to do that we could yeah know. so so um if you go to down at the bottom of your screen you'll see a little box that says chat 
Uh, you can type right, click on chat, and it'll bring up a little message. People can, um, you just need their birthday, the day and the month. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so people yes. can type, can type in their birthday. I mean, we could start with me if you want to do, do me and I'll, well, I'll just let you know as people type them in. Sure. Okay. So you are, uh, born, see, you are an Aquarius three and you're born, <laughs> this is you, the week <laughs> of youth and ease. Oh, how funny. The, the week <laughs> of youth and ease. Yes. That's you, Di. Yep. Okay, cool. So I have, let's see, let's start with, um, so Beverly is March 21st. Okay, so March 21st is Pisces, Aries, Cusp. And it is the, the Cusp of Rebirth is the name of the, the week that identifies it. So it's the, it's the Cusp of Rebirth. So leaving the Piscean energy, but there's some Pisces energy within that week, and there's some Aries energy because you're born right on the cusp of the two signs. So, um, you know, when I think of Pisces, I think of, uh, you know, kind of like an, an energy of the ending, and then Aries is the spring and the new beginning. So it's the cusp of rebirth. Okay. That's nice. Um, July yeah. 1st is Karen. Okay, so let's see. Cancer July 1st is the week of the empath. I can see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. The week of the empath, yes. Yep. Uh, let's see. Allison, June 22nd. Um, okay, so June 22nd is Gemini Cancer Cusp, and it's the cusp of magic. Cusp of magic. That's interesting. Yep. Uh, let's see. Sheila's December 6th. Um, okay. So December 6th is Sagittarius 2, and it's the week of the originator. Okay, Marissa, July 15th. July 15th. Okay. Uh, July 15th is Cancer 3, and it's the week of the persuader. Interesting. So, uh, so I, that uh, just prompted a question. Meaning, that's what that person's strength is? That's what they need to develop? Um, no. I mean, this is not the, um, let me just see if I can find it. This is not the, um, the last part. This is not the week, uh, you know, this is not the karmic destiny book. So okay. that would essentially say, okay, these are your energies from a past lifetime, and now you're moving into this other area. But this this, these weeks that we're talking about now are identifying the week of the energy of the week that you were born in. So um, let me just see. Actually, I have some of these here and I could go through it um, in terms of gifts. And he's, he describes it as gifts and pitfalls. Um, so, um, I mean, I could... I'm trying to think it just probably I'm going to just do the gifts. We're not going to do the pitfalls here. If that's something that somebody wants to work on. So what did we say was, um, let's see. No, this is not it. Um, let me go to you, D. And then um, if we want to, just to give you more of a, a clearer understanding of how it's described. So, I said you were born during the week of uh, youth and ease. So that is, strengths are accomplished, admired, and refined. So those are the three, um, 
you know, and this all defines that particular week of, it's like a seasonal week. Like, so you're getting seasonal ingredients from that particular week um, in terms of, um, you know, who, who you are, you're, you know, you're the water bearer, your mode, modus operandi is thought. So he said, he decide, defines it as a season of midwinter. So, um, you know, Okay. So if we want to, we, there were only a few people. Um, we can probably right. go back and do the three gifts. Sure. So if we go back to Beverly, March 21st. Okay. So March 21st. Uh, oh, she's under Pisces. Okay. Hang on. I have these all categorized, but she's under the, um, She's right between Pisces and Aries. Um, okay. So March 21st is uh, straightforward, intuitive, and passionate. Okay. Um, Karen, July 1st. July 1st is financially astute, sensitive, and technically proficient. Okay, then Sheila's December 6th. Um, unusual, ardent, and talented. Okay, and then Marissa, July 15th. Enterprising, persuasive, and observant. Okay. Alice, May 5th. Um, that's the week of the teacher. I don't know if we said that. May no, fifth. yeah, okay. I hadn't gotten to so it. It's the week of the teacher and it's Taurus too. Um, and enterprising, fair, and magnetic. Okay. Then Allison, June 22nd. So this would be Taurus Cancer Cusp. Uh, wait, yes. Hang on one second. Cancer. Isn't it Gemini Cancer Cusp? Uh, that's, I'm sorry, that's what I meant, Gemini Cancer. Yep, June 22nd. Okay. And just... Okay, um, and it's the cusp of magic, uh, and the strengths are affectionate, seductive, and objective. Okay, Cliff, May 16th. May 16th is Taurus 3 and the week of the natural. And the strengths are fun-loving, adventuresome, and imaginative. Okay, and then Ray is February 26th. Uh, 
of Pisces. Um, February 26th is Pisces 1, the week of spirit. And the strengths are spiritual, sensual, and transparent. Okay, and then the last one I have is Deanna, August 28th. Um, so this would be Virgo one, the week of system builders and the strengths are structured, dependable, service oriented. I see that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's, that's cool. It's, it's so fascinating. Um, yes. So, yeah, I mean, I, don't, I've, I haven't read the week of karmic destiny, but that is the one I'm the most curious about now, too, just to see, you know, who your soul wants you to be and, you know, discern, right. discerning that from what the ego wants. So you were, you were born in 68, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so let me just tell you briefly that your karmic path is um, the path of discovery. And um, you are interesting. <laughs> You're similar to me, again, in the sense that um, I'm moving from, I believe it is Libra 2 to Aries 2. You're moving from Libra 3 to Aries 3. So you are moving from the theater to the pioneer, which is what you said. So this right now that we're in right now is Aries 3. Like my grandson was born in an Aries 3 period. That is the week of the pioneer. So this is the, the strengths of this particular week and the, and the things that you want to be working on is where your soul wants you to end up. Um, so. Wait, can you say that again? What, said, is this, what is the significance of this specific week? This, so this week is Aries 3. So you're We saying, are currently in Aries 3, actually ending today. Aries okay. 3 runs from, uh, um, I'm sorry, from April 11th through April 18th. Okay. Okay. And so, something so this, about, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, this week that we're in right now and the qualities that are assigned to this week. So like my grandson was born in this week. He's starting. But you're based on everything that I've looked at so far here, you're ending, not that you're ending your life now, but that right. you're, this is culminate, this, whatever this week is about is what your soul wants you to um, collaboratively culminate all your learning and all your, uh, all your soul work into the theme of this week, which is the pioneer. So okay. you are moving into the pioneer um, your gifts are, for the way of discovery, are strategic, hard driving, and generous. And you need to release the need to do, to do things by yourself. <laughs> oh my God, that is perfect. Uh -huh. That is perfect. That's yeah. So that's what your soul wants you to do is to release the need to do things yourself. And the reward would be the joy of learning. So it's telling you what you have to release in order to get the reward. Um, interesting that it says one of your pitfalls is overly independent. <laughs> Not interesting. It's exactly right. Yeah, self-sacrificing, overly independent, and unyielding are the pitfalls. 
But that unyielding could have to do with that Aquarian sense of independence. I am who I am and I'm gonna do this all by myself and I'm gonna be the pioneer. So that's what my grandson is coming in with because I read his, you know, the week, the way of uh, the pioneer before he came in because we knew he was gonna be born this week and it was like, oh my goodness, and he's an Aries. And so it's just very like, I'm doing this my way. You know, they were going to induce her. Sure enough, the night before her induction was scheduled, he came. You know, it's like, no, no, no Pitocin for me. You know, so. Right. Again, the soul is dictating. I don't care. You know, we think the soul is a day old or, you know, no, the soul is ancient. Who knows how old his soul is? His body is little and tiny. Right. So. Yes, it's it's, so so, it's that that is so funny, and um, it's coming up to me a, a lot. I was actually so Monday night. I don't know if you guys lost power, but we lost power here. So with that st- big windstorm that we had, mm-hmm. so we were literally literally like sitting in the dark from probably you know four four o'clock till it came back on probably like one in the morning or something like that. So we're sitting there and we're like, okay, if it isn't bad enough that we can't go anywhere with the, you know, (laughs) stay stay at home. Now the universe is basically saying, you're not going to watch TV and you know, you're not going to get on your internet and blah, blah, blah. So my my friend pulls up um, a podcast and we were listening to Esther Perel. I don't know if you know her or not. She's the big relationship. um, Yes. I'm, I, I don't know what her degrees are. I don't know if she's actually psych or, or what she is, but she's, if people haven't heard of her, her name is Esther Perel, P-E-R-E-L. And um, she's fascinating. I, I love her work. I've listened to her, you know, for many years. But anyway, she was talking about um, in relationships, looking at why, why is there conflict? So this guy was, it was an interview and this guy was saying how he had one of his past relationships. There was all this conflict in it. And she said, well, how were you raised? Were you raised to be self-reliant or were you raised to be loyal and cooperative? Mm. So basically what kind of a family you were brought up in then also determines, you know, some of the way that you operate in relationship. And I, as an only child, and obviously now, you know, you're, you're the the metaphysical part of it is also confirming it. I was raised to be self-reliant, to be independent. My mother would, you know, throw me out of the house and say, go outside and figure it out, you know, go climb a tree or do whatever. And, and right. I had to think, I basically had to create my own games because there was no siblings. Right. And, you know, there was very few other children that lived on our street. There was like two or three. Um, and a lot, you know, a lot of times it was just me trying to figure out something to do. And right. so it's... Th- I learned you need to be self-reliant. You need to be independent. You need to figure this out on your own. You need to do this yourself. Right. And and that's just been my MO for my whole life, pretty much. Your whole life. Right. <laughs> yeah. So right. that's really interesting um, that the karmic thing is release the need to do things by yourself. Well, yeah, you can't. I mean, you can't. Your soul chose a family system that was going to reinforce, you know, what you, how you came in. I mean, you know, you may have, uh, I mean, I'd have to look up Libra three um, energies and what that was all about, what you brought in from a past lifetime. But, um, you know, you definitely, um, hmm. okay, I'm just reading it. But uh, anyway, you, you were definitely born with pioneering and leadership abilities. Those abilities were in you. And so on some level, when your mother told you to go outside and to be on your own and to figure it out or whatever, she maybe unknowingly or unintentionally or whatever, or maybe intuitively knew that this was going to help you develop this pioneering leadership ability that you would eventually move into as your soul and your body progressed in this lifetime so that you were starting to learn it at a very elementary level by going outside so going outside would be the pioneer you know would be the nature the outdoorsy the get out there and figure it out um and you know get out there also when i think about a leader get out there in front and figure it out you know, go out there and start to dictate how you want your life to be. Um, so, you know, 
we may look at those early parenting issues as, you know, like, oh, they were these bad parents, or not bad, but, you know, they were uh, unavailable, or they were not present, or they didn't want to be bothered, or whatever, looking at it in a critical child sort of way, like I didn't have this good parenting, but really, maybe it was all, you know, a <laughs> part of the plan, or pl part of the plan, exactly. Yeah, no, I never, I never saw it that way as her not wanting to be bothered with me because there were many other times where she would, you know, play with me or make up games or whatnot. Right. And my grandmother lived with us. And so, you know, she was around. I, it was more just the fact that I, I was around adults all the time. There was like yeah. not a lot of other children. So when it was time to be adult time, whatever, you know, they had stuff to do. Let's face it, like, you know, right. take care of the house. So exactly. it was go outside and, you know, amuse yourself. You can, right. you know, you're, you're smart enough. You can figure it out. Right. So, you know. Well, she was, con she was contributing to your path in that way, you know. Right. I mean, definitely. That was part of, you know, because we have to remember that we have a language as we're in our bodies, our minds have languages, our tongues have languages, but then there's this language of the soul that is unspoken and is intuitive. And, and we don't realize a lot of times that we're being dictated by that, by that language that, you know, I mean, even though we're not verbalizing things, on some level, intuitively, your mother knew that this was part of your early training. I, I, I believe that, you know, I do believe that. And she may have sent you out what looked like on a mundane level as just like, okay, you need to go out and figure it yourself. You're an only child, you gotta do this. Um, I'll play with you when you come back in. But, but there's also the soul that is, you know, she contracted with your soul in a past lifetime to mother you this time around. There was a contract there. And so part of that contract was, um, this is how I'm gonna mother Diane when she comes in. This is what she needs. This is, you know, just like she needed your energy, you know, whoever you were um, as having been part of the theater or, you know, what that's all about. I mean, she needed to have, she's, you, you were teaching her just as she was teaching you is what I'm saying. And I think that, you know, that's the beauty of the Yeah, the it's, it's, it's interesting because she's an only child too, yet uh, very, very different from me. She was very, I don't know if I want to use the word dependent, maybe connected mm -hmm. to, to her mother and, and father. And her father passed, my grandfather passed away at a very young age when she was only, well, he was 50 something. She was 23. Uh -huh. And so um, her life has been about being close. You mm. know, she doesn't travel. She, you know, she is more of a homebody. She wants to stay at home. She was very connected to all the relatives. Right. And, and it's just interesting to see two, you know, both only children, but completely different, right. you know, path. Whether right. that was supposed to be her path or not, um, we're just very different. Right. Well, she mothered a child that perhaps she wanted, so some of who you are may well be, in fact, some of who she wanted to be, but, you know, either wasn't brought up in that sort of family system or didn't have the, um, the independent spirit that you were born with. You know, you're a different soul. So right. you... I don't know, maybe taught her a lot about, you know, individuation, where she was more um, dependent. And so maybe that's also why you're as independent as you are, because that, you know, that, that kind of, I don't know, maybe conflicts with the energy of your spirit, which is to be your own person. Right. Yep. So, yeah. you know, it's all, I mean, it's, it's all part of the plan. All fascinating. <laughs> so... Um, was there anything else that you wanted to say about personality? Did we get to everything or? Um, well, I think essentially on an extremely superficial level, yes, we got to everything. I mean, I, I you know, certainly, you know, if other people wanted to know their paths, uh, just like I told you yours, we only have about five more minutes, but I mean, I could briefly look them up if they wanted to know the name of the path that they're on. Um, I talked about the week. Um, but I think that it's a system, you know, that definitely needs um, 
comprehensive study, looking at it, trying to figure out maybe your own patterns, your psychological patterns, because again, I'm gonna come back to my original definition of psychology. It's the study of the psyche. Psyche is a Greek word that means soul. So these gentlemen knew that psyche and mind were not all about the body. So they left medical school or one of them left medical school and got into understanding this psychology of the ancients. Um, and this is really, you know, every time I go to these books, all of these books, whether it's personality or the cards or whatever, it's like, this is the system. This mm -hmm. is the system, you know. This is where the, the truths are. Now, what you want to do with those truths, it doesn't mean that every single person that researches their truths is going to work on their truths, you know. But right. Yeah. That's, you know, so. Um, so I'm going to say this because I, it, I, I feel like it took a little bit of time for you to find people. Is that, yes. st is that still going to be the case? Because what we can do is we can have people email you. Okay. To know yeah. their path. Because the other thing I wanted to do is just, you know, uh, make sure we have time to do one person's destiny right. card. Yes. So let's do this. So do um, if you want to know what your path is, you can email Marianne and um, go ahead and just give your email for people. Yes. It's M A L C 7119 at AOL.com. Okay, so email her with, do you need, you just need to know the, uh, the day and the month for the birthday, right? Or do you need uh, the year? I need to know, no, for the past, I need to know the year. Okay, also. so full month, birthday. day, and year. Yeah, yep. so email her your full birthday, and she'll um, let you know what your path is. Mm -hmm. And then, um, the lucky person today is Alice. And uh, I already have her, she, Alice, you can certainly unmute yourself, but I already have your birthday. It's May 5th. May 5th. Okay. So May 5th, <laughs> interesting, my long range card this week is the Ace of Spades. May 5th is the Ace of Spades and the Seven of Diamonds. So we have two Ace of Spades as far as I know on this call, because Karen is the other one. Um, so... The Ace of Spades is the card of ambition and secrets. That is your birth card. Uh, Ace of Spades are usually extremely ambitious people. Um, they're aces. Um, they are here to work on uh, the art of transformation. So the Ace of Spades can indicate death of the old, beginning of the new. Uh, so a lot of uh, learning uh, and possibly endings for the Ace of Spades. I mean, they can be good endings. They don't have to be necessarily negative endings. When we see the spade, um, it means um, it indicates the deathlessness of the soul. So aces are very... Um, they're very forward moving. They're similar to uh, an Aries in the sense of, you know, being uh, self-focused, um, you know, having a, a desire to move forward with things. Um, uh, I'm sorry, the, the date of birth you saw oh, is May 5th. So it's Taurus and, um, and Aries there. So the Taurus is very grounded. Um, you know, they can be, um, they can have an interest in finances or uh, in materialistic sorts of energies, but then as they move throughout their life, they usually move from uh, a sense of materialism into a sense of spirituality. So they start to balance um, the transformative aspect of the Ace of Spades with just the mundane aspect of it that they may have started off early with. Um, and sometimes there are, like I said, sometimes there are secrets attached to this card. Um, sometimes issues regarding fears of abandonment uh, that they may have had early on in their life um, or perhaps in a past incarnation that they have to work through. Uh, Jennifer Aniston is the ace of spades born on February 11th and she clearly had some issues with uh, and, you know, married or connected with men oftentimes that ended up leaving her so she could work on her abandonment issues. Um, 
And then the second card is, uh, I believe, the five of spades. Let me just take a quick look. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's the seven of diamonds. Seven of diamonds. So seven of diamonds um, is the card of spiritual values. So combined with the ace of spades, there is very much an interest in spirituality. Uh, sometimes the seven of diamonds has a, um, a fear of not having enough. They may have, I don't know, million dollars in the bank, but they still will always worry about whether or not there's enough. So there's kind of sometimes a, um, a, just some sort of a discrepancy between abundance and scarcity for that card. Um, but they are very, very, very loving people. Uh, if you know Marianne Williamson, she is the Seven of Diamonds. Um, so very caring, very loving, um, very unconditional. Sevens are, they like to go deep um, and they want to be of value. They want to be of service. Um, so it, it really a combination of two cards that have, um, I guess I would say more introspective energies to them. So the ace is a one, the seven is kind of the old man looking over his books or researching, uh, quieter energy, more refined energy, uh, loving energy, those, those sorts of things. So. Yeah. Diamond spade, adult, old person, um, with both of those. So, does any of that resonate? She, I, well, she she's muted, so she'd have to unmute herself. I don't oh, know if she has I see. Okay, a lot of noise in the background or not? But, right. Um, right. But yep. oh, she says perfect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Isn't your uh. New grandson, Seven of Diamonds? He is. Yeah. He was born on a Seven of Diamonds, Nine of Clubs day. Yes, on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, I really, I didn't call that one right at all. I thought he was going to be born on Wednesday. And then, um, you know, next thing she knew, she pushed for five minutes and he was out. So, you know, five minutes, literally five minutes that my son-in-law was like, one minute we were going to rest. And, and I thought to myself, this is interesting because he's in Aries and his Mercury is in Aries. And all they've been saying from the beginning is that his head was really down. And I thought, yeah, that's Aries, forward moving, head down, I'm going for this. <laughs> and one minute they were gonna rest and the next minute the nurse was like, we're gonna have a baby. And she was like, nah, you know, five minutes. And so he was out. So anyway, yes, he's a seven of diamonds and very, um, you know, very sweet souls, actually. They're very sweet souls. They're very, um, you know, uh, very, they're here to love. Uh, do you know Marianne Williamson? Are you familiar? Yeah. 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 So she's the Seven of Diamonds. Very, very loving energies um, and very extremely spiritual and quiet, like I said, and refined. Um, one of their only, uh, you know, I, the only thing that I can think of that they're, fearful about really is having enough it's always about whether they have enough so mm -hmm. um regardless of how much they have so that's what they are here to work on so right awesome yeah, yeah. well thank you again you're welcome awesome awesome information fun. yeah so yes. um you can email marianne and uh also i would encourage you guys to all check out her brand new website Yes. MarianneCostarella.com. Yep. It's beautiful. Thank you. And informative. And, and also um, definitely reach out to her. If you're interested in more information about personality, for sure. Right. Yeah, um, I can do a personality profile as well for people if they wanted to do that as opposed to just destiny cards. So you right. can work on that. Yep. Right. Excellent. Absolutely. So this is recorded and... Um, we will email it out to everybody and we will see you all again, hopefully next week. All right. Same time, Saturday at 10 o'clock. Thanks, Have Di. A, thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye.